All right, everyone, once again, we have political violence that's, you know, it wasn't even being immediately labeled political violence, but Bolsonaro, one of the main candidates down in Brazil, who I believe is still technically in second place as far as, like, uh, what the voters want, but but the dude who's, like, in the lead can't run because he's in jail. Uh, so it looks like Bolsonaro will end up winning by default because <laughs> some people might cast their votes for someone who's technically ineligible. Uh, he's he's a populist leader. They call him far right, but get, within the context of Brazilian politics, when you've got a Brazil that is run primarily by a combination of what we would call social democrats and then socialists being vaguely separate from one another, um, when you have such a situation in a country... Uh, what passes for far right is going to be what we would probably consider to be centrism, <laughs> essentially. Bolsonaro is not far right. He has some nativistic views, it seems. Some sort of, sort of pro-blue-collar views. Uh, that's not a far right platform. Uh, believing in having some free market in your country and not, you know, micromanaging every aspect of people's lives. Believing in having a culture. That used to be called common sense. Uh, but he's been stabbed. He was on campaign yesterday, and apparently he was being, like, paraded around. People were like, carrying him around on their shoulders, just like... And someone came up and stabbed him in the liver. Uh, and uh, the problem is they perforated his intestine during the attack, during the stabbing. So they're thinking, uh, he's in stable condition right now, but technically still serious condition as well, because they're going to make sure he doesn't get infected from that. Uh, if he dies, all hell breaks loose probably in Brazil, which is <laughs> unfortunately a possibility. Uh, chances are, if he doesn't die, uh, he will win the election uh, by significant numbers, and then immediately uh, this will be used by his uh, allies to crack down on, uh, crack some skulls of the socialists within the country. What we've seen, though, is that the left is almost invariably responsible for acts of political violence. And some people say, well, look at this chart that was compiled by always Huffington Post or BuzzFeed or something. It shows that the right is more violent than the left. That's only the case if all religious groups are lumped in as politically violent groups. If you lump Islamofascism specifically in with right-wing violence, yes, the right wing has killed many more people than the left. Otherwise, you're looking at left-wing groups. If you're looking at groups that are specifically political in nature, that don't overlap at all with religion, it's the left that's more violent. At least in most countries, not always. There are some countries in which you have right-wing guerrilla movements that, technically speaking, would be responsible for much more political violence. That's not the case in the U.S. It's not the case in probably any of Western Europe. Uh, and so, you know, be that as it may, though, it gets, you know, they, they always fiddle around with the numbers. It's sort of like when they roll up suicides with gun crime in order to make it look like the U.S. has a massive catastrophic violence problem. Well, it actually doesn't. We just um, tabulate our statistics differently from most of the developed world, making it look like we are considerably more, <laughs> more, more upset and more violent, more given over towards randomly uh, attacking one another. But Bolsonaro was attacked. And the first uh, uh, stories that came out, they're like, well, we can't confirm that this is a politically motivated attack. It's like, yes, the dude is being, the dude, highly recognizable dude, you know, divisive, supposedly, according to the left, getting paraded around at a political rally. I'm sure that some random person, not motivated by politics, they just, they didn't like Bolsonaro's version of, of Catholicism or something, said, oh, well, we don't think that he takes enough care of his Virgin Mary statue. I'm going to go up and stab him. Uh, he's, he's, he's a cis het male pig and, and it's like fem No, it was politically motivated, absolutely. 100% chance that it was politically motivated. The person who stabbed him probably, it is probably the equivalent of some of the people within the United States here who think that a person wearing a MAGA hat must be a Nazi. It's the same equivalency. It's probably someone, it's probably someone who themselves isn't even a political radical. They've simply been propagandized at by the Brazilian, and at this point, because of the internet, the world media, into thinking that Bolsonaro is going to destroy their country if he wins. It's probably someone who essentially has been brainwashed. That's the problem. The corporate media has amplified the initial problem. The initial problem is that, you know, 5 10% of your population at any given time is radical enough to maybe fire a shot, maybe stab somebody in the kidney. It's, it's not even common that they will do it, but the problem's amplified 
when you have a global media, which is what the internet has created, it's got many, many positive aspects. The one detriment is that a bunch of corporations, which work in tandem with the same multinational banking and corporate firms, by the way, and the same global political structure, they all rub elbows together, the same world celebrity structure, you could say at this point. These people amplify the problem by creating armies of drones that believe every word that they say and believe they've been told, erroneously, but they've been told and convinced that there's a systemic problem with far-right violence all over the, the Western world. So they're on the lookout for it. So when they see a Bolsonaro or someone in a Trump hat, their initial response is, oh my God, it's a Nazi. The Nazis are coming. We've got to fight back and defend you know, democracy or whatever. That's not actually true. They're the ones eroding you know, the democratic and republican systems of the Western world. They're eroding it. They're, they're trying to give more power to centralized government, ironically the exact opposite of what all of these civilized nations originally intended with any constitutional system that exists. They're giving more power to centralized states. They're clamoring to disarm their fellow citizens out of fear that's being stoked by billion dollar corporations that in turn are owned by multi-trillion dollar mega corporations that whose assets on paper they've got like one office in Tahiti. But off of paper, they're a conglomerate that employs 100,000 people, has trillions in total assets, and controls, you know, media in various countries. You know, you have one multinational firm. It'll control some inordinate, it'll control 10, 15% of all U.S. media, and then it'll control half of Kenyan media, and then it'll have outlets in, in Moscow, outlets in Sao Paulo, and everywhere else in the world. That's basically the problem. And they're for-profit uh, corporations as well. <laughs> That's all they are. They're business entities. Uh, in many cases, operating under the laws in some other countries, they have to do things that under you know the laws of Western Europe or the United States or Canada or something would be considered a severe breach of journalistic ethics to get you thrown in jail for doing it. Oh yeah, you're giving up all your sources to the Chinese government, but here they won't give up a source that claims that the President of the United States is senile. Wonderful how that works now, isn't it? No, no, Bolsonaro's been stabbed. Uh, all Brazilians should definitely condemn it. It is political violence. If you think that Bolsonaro is a horrible person, vote against him, argue against him. See, this is why web free speech is such a good thing. Take to the internet and say, hey, I think Bolsonaro's an asshole. I think he'll ruin the country. I think if you vote for him, you're crazy. But when you start stabbing people, especially when you stab the candidate themselves, that's robbing not just the candidate, potentially, of their life, but millions of their fans of their voice. Uh, and we've seen that here. It's like when people try to disrupt political events, political rallies. It happens all the time. It's not just the left at this point. It, ca it happens constantly. Anyone holds a rally, some fucking third party grassroots funded independent candidate with 10 fans holding a ra holds a poker night with his 10 fans. He's like, yeah, I'm running for mayor or something. And then someone's outside, you know, throwing rocks through the window practically. That's how we've devolved uh, in the Western world. How decadent we've become. Uh, people are so bored that they've begun to physically attack one another. They think it's totally normal. That's about all. Peace out.